Oh, there we go. Marker. So it's M. That way, like, I can go, oh, straight to here and then edit God, from you here. God, you that fucking monster. You don't like it? That's it's it's good for your wrist. <laughs> it keeps your, keeps your uh, bones from not crossing. It looks like you're holding the cock. I mean... <laughs> Is that why you got it? <laughs> my my fiance hates it because she doesn't like having to like hold on to it and move it around. She likes to sit on top of stuff and hold it. Um, but like this keeps your wrist from uh, from crossing the bones and giving you carpal tunnel. Mm. I have a I don't have a keyboard for that. I want to get a keyboard that does that too. What would it like, look like? It's a it's a triangle. What? And you type like this. What? What? When I when I play games, I have my keyboard like this, and so I type vertically. Are you a I, monster? Yes. <laughs> it's for extended gameplay, cause like. Um, I guess I'm out of the loop. Maybe. <laughs> when maybe. I, when I'm playing like. With a regular mouse, like in like twenty minutes into it, like my arm like already hurts, like I can feel it all up in my muscles and That's like just your weakness going away. Basically. <laughs> but I, I I've used this and like I've played this for like eight hours once and it was it was great. Eight hours? In a row. Oh my god, what do you do? Video games. Strategic porn hub. Have I ever showed you like one of my one of my games that I play? Like, I used to love, like, video games, like, so much. No, I don't think you do. <laughs> okay, you know what? You sound like a gatekeeper. <laughs> I'm not trying to be that guy. But... I, think, I, think, I think you play games. I don't think you live games. <laughs> I don't think you live the game. You're right, Jesse. I live in reality. Now you sound like a hater. Oh, sorry. I'm not trying to sound like <laughs> you a hater. you being a hater right now? <laughs> I'm not trying to sound like a hater. I'm just trying to critique you. <laughs> Uh, there's no ill will. Um, okay. Uh, it's like this, Jesse. You could argue that you spend uh, that amount. <laughs> the way you're looking at it. You could argue that you spend 10 hours I mean, on watching. a game, right? So my neck's not cracking. On, on, a, on a game. Yeah. But, uh, like, where does it really get you in life? Uh, I mean, definitely, I think it depends on the game that you're playing. Uh, no, Jesse. It really doesn't. Yep. Because if you're, if you're doing, like, educational games, games that stimulate... Oh, yeah, no, okay, yeah, you're right. The brain. Yeah, you're right. Like, I think... Yeah, the brain game. The brain games. <laughs> no, you're right. Like, brainy games. But that's not a brain game. That's definitely a brain game. No, okay, you could argue... I bet a bunch of people would argue that. But, you know, is it preparing you for anything? Uh, it's it uses you. Can, That's a no. That is a hard no. <laughs> no, this is a hard yes. Okay, explain because the, it. the amount of stress that you get when you put in. Oh, you're simulating life. Yes, oh, it's stress it. management. Oh. So when you put in a, uh, what do you call it, like a system into that game, it has to be compatible with all your previous systems that you put in. Okay. And if you're smart, you yeah. can then prepare it for future systems that you put in. Yeah, so it's like planning ahead. Mm -hmm. like, um, I get it. But half the time, especially if you haven't like played the game like all the way to the end, um, you put in a system not knowing what's supposed to go next. Oh. And, and so then you, you then up. have to retrofit yeah. everything okay. to fit your new systems. Yeah. Sushi. Okay. I, no, I, go I, lay down. Go lay down. I get that. But, um, like... I'm really not trying to sound like a hater. But, Still sound like a hater. But uh, what if you had like a hobby that was like productive enough to where it, you encountered the same scenarios while actually like furthering uh, your your development in real life? I'm I'm seeing like a VR game <laughs> to where I could just live in VR and do this. <laughs> And not have to hey, hang buddy, out in the I'm real world. I'm shitting in VR. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. Well, then stop playing. No, in the game. In the game. I have to go to the bathroom in the game. Yes. Yeah, like yes. Sims. But you are the Sim. I mean, we're all the Sim. We're all the Sim. 
What else? Are... You know, what if someone removes the ladder out of a pool? What if someone puts the carpet too close to the fucking fireplace? Heck yeah, it's going to catch on fire. And you die. And There's it... nothing you can do. The fire department goes around and fucking back. They don't know where your gate is. Every time, 100% of the time, dude. I swear to God, I got so mad at that game so many times because every time my character, and I never fucking figured it out. I never figured it out. Until at the like, fucking, I had this fucking coming to Jesus moment where I was like, oh, the carpet catches on fire because it's one little fucking square too close to the fucking, the, the fireplace. And my character likes to sleep on the couch, which is on the carpet next to the fireplace. And guess what? You know how many times I died? All of them. I, the, the fucking, the, the fire department would fucking jaunt around the neighborhood a couple times. <laughs> They'd scale the fence. They'd go into There's the There's some smoke over here. They'd Get go over the, that fence. They'd go to the There's back, nothing back here. They'd go to the backyard. Fuck off. Stand there for a couple minutes. And by that time, I was already dead. Hours in Sims. <laughs> yeah. By that time, I was already dead. And my family was trying to figure out what was happening. <laughs> meanwhile, if my family was... They just get a text message notification <laughs> that their son died. <laughs> Meanwhile, if my, From the family, Grim if my family would have looked out in the backyard, they would have seen fucking like three... Fucking fire department dudes standing there doing fuck all. What's going on? There? And then, then, oh, the the topper, the very topper. After them standing there for like three or four hours in the game, not of gameplay, but in the game, mm -hmm. they just unload. They just start <laughs> spraying the ground, acting like they're fucking doing something, and they leave. Uh, 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 Never. Go. Never actually finding the fire. <laughs> Never. I don't think I've ever had the fire department actually. Shh, go. Actually put the fire out. Go, please. They, they always fuck off. I I think it's on purpose. Like they're like, okay, the game the game creators did it on purpose. I swear to God, because they're like, hey, shit's gonna catch on fire. You're gonna have to figure out what's flammable or not. Carpets. Those are like tinder boxes. They're soaked in gasoline. They will go up. The fumes, the vapor, 10 feet away. That's going to cause it to explode. Now, the fire department, completely useless. You got to... Uh, no. Sure, chef. You got to... Your dog is giving me fever dreams, dude. The, the, She's the, having the, fever dreams. The, the way she looks... She's literally having fever dreams, <laughs> like, in her waking hours. The way she looks at me when she's trying to get me to play the ball, just... <laughs> play with the ball, pick up the ball. No more. No more. No more. So, so if we want to get like uh, like planning ahead, I think um, if I'm gonna I'm gonna sound uh, not too much like a hater, I think that <laughs> life is enough planning ahead. No, see the whole that point. maybe you should um, experience uh, life instead of. Uh, I think the whole point is to avoid life. Oh, no, no, I totally get that. No, 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 I hate... I like, hate. I get escapism, yeah, totally. No, 100%. <laughs> but, uh, maybe, um, it's like a, like a, a sadistic kind of thing where it's like, I hate, um, life so much, mm. but at the same time, same. you have to experience it, and since you hate it so much, it makes you actually, uh, experience it. Just like, I hate, like... Like, fucking people are so fucking stupid. Like, and I'm not just saying, like, the general part. I'm just saying, like, generally. like <laughs> No, people. no, not even generally. Literally everyone. Literally, literally, <laughs> Jesse, stupid. right here, sitting next to me, I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, he's on his fucking phone, not even... Not Hold even, on. <laughs> I have a... I thought I had written down, like, stuff that we were talking about at work. We were talking about... Okay, so let's get on to a different topic. Because okay. this is... This is will easily <laughs> go off the rails. Go off I can the easily go like this for hours. So we were talking about if you couldn't feel pain. This is one that I find interesting. If you couldn't feel pain, if, you're, if your pain receptors didn't communicate with your brain. Mm. If it, like, how... On the f the regular side of things, on the coin, on one side of the coin, you would say, wow, you would, like, destroy yourself, right? Because pain is what meters, you know, is what tells you, oh, hey, you just smashed your thumb. You can't fucking use your thumb because it hurts like a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Don't fucking do that again. Your body's like, you fucked up. Stop using that. You, you broke something. Like, when I fucking smashed my finger on the fucking thing, mm. my brain was like, guess what? You're not going to use that finger. 
You're not using that. But if I didn't feel pain, I fucking I wouldn't even know. Wouldn't even wouldn't know. know. I'd use it until it would. It would. It's like um. It's like if you didn't have a sharpener for a pencil, and you just kept nubbing it to death. It, it it just it would just get worse and worse and worse and pretty soon you're ruining the thing you're trying to write. Yeah, you're just you're not even the thing you're trying to write. Like you're just straight up, like tearing the paper. Out. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> so it's like, what if like a mongoloid just trying to like? What if you like if I couldn't feel pain, I would take it upon myself to make an experiment with my life. I that's what I like to view life as as an experiment. And as yourself, as as the uh, the um, what is it the um, the uh, you get an outcome by changing um, what's the fucking word the variable. Mm-hmm. You're the variable. Life is essentially the outcome. So if you were to change something about you, being the variable, what would be the outcome? So like, what if you could not feel pain? What would you do? Well, if you can't feel pain. Uh, you know, you can't live by just stabbing yourself. That is an experiment, but you, you would die. You'd be like, oh, I can't feel pain. Fuck it. Like, no. What if you put that to a constructive, like, um, form of test, mm-hmm. and you decided to be, like, you wanted to be, like, the strongest person in the world? Okay. How... Would you, what I'm asking is, would you have a better chance or would you have a worse chance because you can't feel pain? Would you not know that you're destroying your muscles and would you um, lack the ability to, to reinforce them by destroying them or would that make them stronger? I would definitely say you would have a 100% worse chance. Yeah. Because, like, one of the biggest factors of muscle growth is rest. Yeah. So, well, is it if though? you're not resting... Is it, though? Is it, though? 100%. No, are you sure? If you're, if you're tearing sure? your muscles... Are you sure? Because it's like marathon run- runners, right? Yeah. Where's the rest in that? Are you talking about after? No, no, no. Like, they, they train up to that marathon. You got it, yeah. Right? So, they yeah. tear their muscles and rest before their marathons to be able to learn it. Like obviously their muscles oh, are tearing yeah, yeah, you're right. up to it. No, no, no. Yeah. I get know, it. Yeah. But it's not like you go do a marathon like instantly. Well, it's like this <laughs> right out of the womb. Just <laughs> I would imagine even though if you don't feel pain, you would still get tired, right? You would get out of breath. Uh, I definitely think you would get out of you breath. Would, yeah, yeah. Cause you would feel your heart rate change. It's yeah. not that you don't feel anything. It's that you don't feel pain. So then, would you? Would you? I wish I had someone I knew that couldn't feel pain. I'd be like, okay, but do you get sweaty? Hundred percent. Do you get sweaty? Like you would, hundred percent, because that's a different. That's a different response. Yeah, it has nothing to do with pain. uh, Also, like respiratory. That's different. So it's like if you're like you know, if you're doing fucking a a zillion fucking push-ups, right? You're gonna get sweaty and you're going to get um, uh, out of breath um, before you fuck up anything. Yeah, I would like to like know like. If they're doing like all these push-ups, right? Yeah. Is there a point where their muscles will stop reacting to what they're doing? Well, yeah, a hundred percent. Well, okay, it's look. like you know, like could you imagine having that for the first time? Yeah. You've never felt pain, and all of a sudden you can't move your arms yeah. to lift you up off the ground. Well, it's like this. You've you've gotten to that point. Everyone's gotten to that point. Okay, yeah. we're we're all adults here. Yeah. We've all we've all tried our hands at different things, um, and some of no us, more. Go. No more. Some of us, you and me, we, we still are, are I, I'm, I still go to the gym, I weight lift, uh, I was doing a lot more um, endurance stuff. So like you reach that, that point where you, your muscles will literally not do anything. You reach that point. Yes. And, and that's after the pain. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I think your body, regardless of how you feel pain, would still stop you. Mm-hmm. Um. Because, I mean, everyone talks about being able to push your limits, right? Your limit is in your head. And after that, uh, everything is physical limitations. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you can't fucking, um, you can't lift, you know, like a million times your own weight. Like, that's just a physiological thing. And then, like, if you get close to your, like, 
Like, I was at the gym the other day. And I, uh, one of my uh, repetitions I do is, like, downward presses, right? And there's nowhere to, like, hook your legs into. Mm -hmm. So you have to use your own body weight. And when I got back to it, it's like, yeah, I'm down 100 pounds. And I was still, like, lifting the same amount. But when I started getting to my max, I couldn't lift it. Not because I couldn't push it down, but because I was lighter than That's the amount right. of weight. <laughs> that, so it would just lift me up. <laughs> so, so it's like, what if... You have to, like, hook your legs yeah, underneath. Yeah, that like, would go. So it's, so, cause, I need a belt. Because I'm going like this, right? Yeah. And the, the, uh, they're in a pulley system. And so you have the bars coming down, and you're going like this, and you're in an open area. So there's nowhere to hook your legs into. You're standing. You're in a standing upright position. Mm -hmm. So there's more limitations than just um, feeling pain. You know, like, if, you, if you're if you fucking, well, it's like guys who literally, like, your muscles are, or your bones are stronger than your muscles, mm -hmm. regardless. Um, so if you, no matter what, if you get up to like, if you're the world's strongest man, you're just getting closer to finding how much weight it takes to break your bones. Uh, have, have you seen the, the guy do the, uh, what is it? World's heaviest deadlift? Uh, I've seen a lot of them, but I'm not sure if the, I've seen the particular one you're talking it's about. It's like, uh, 500 kilograms. So fucking, <laughs> what is that? Like. A thousand. Oops, I don't know why it, it, it automatically went to. Uh... One thousand one hundred and two pounds. Yeah, that's yeah, because it's like okay, deadlifted kneecap. that kneecap. Do it. Like, he first like, they, like barely got it off the ground, mm -hmm. blew nose blood vessels. Yeah, and it was just straight dripping blood, mm -hmm. and. Uh, like, he obviously, you know, got yeah. it all the way up and held it. Yeah. And he was, like, being, like, the badass that he is. Like, the world's strongest man type yeah. of guy. Yeah. The the judge was like, oh, yeah, you're good. And he's like... Yeah. He's just sitting there holding it for, like, three seconds longer than he needed to. Just yeah. to fucking just to do piss it. on everyone. Yeah. And just be like, yeah, you guys can't even lift this. Yeah. Why are you judging me? Yeah. And well, then, it, like, drops it. Yeah, it's like... It's, it was a complete like, mind over matter. But, like... So like if you if you I th I don't I actually the more I think about it if you couldn't feel pain I think it'd be more of like it would make you inexperienced. Oh, 100 percent. Because because like, you wouldn't know. I, you, you, the you pain know. is what directs you. Yeah. Right. I, so like if you are you don't know if you're doing proper lift techniques. That's what I was going to say. Because you can't feel the muscle engagement. I I think you would have to have a professional. Um, coach. But even then, they wouldn't know because they don't know what's going on inside of you. True, but it's like you, they would at least be able to monitor if you are in the like right position. Yeah, yeah, outwardly. Stuff, but yeah. obviously, well, inward position is a whole different thing because it's like all everyone's different because I mean, we all have the same kind of body plan, but the layout's different. Like some people have, uh, you know, different muscles. Uh, some uh, different shaped muscles. They have different. They, some people are actually missing fucking muscles. Mm -hmm. So if your pectoral muscle is longer or shorter, that directly determines on how you're properly going to um, do um, bench presses or push-ups. If you have a very short pectoral muscle, your muscles or your uh, arms are going to be a lot closer, mm -hmm. but it's going to look weird to everyone else. Because it's going to look like improper technique. But the only way to know proper technique is to feel the the um, the effects the of, effects of, of your muscles wearing down. Did you just down. fuck up your back? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I think that... I think the, yeah, the, that would be one huge thing would be like having a disadvantage of not being able to like feel like shit in the morning. So if and you know can't that feel you... pain, what can you feel is the other thing. That's a really good question. Because, okay, so we, we think about this. It's like, you're born with it, right? Let's say you don't have an accident and all of a sudden you can't feel pain. Because, like, let's say tomorrow I couldn't feel pain. I'd be invincible. I know what I can and can't do. Yeah. But if I was born like this, 
I'd be a fucking idiot. <laughs> I'd be fucking. Any anyone <laughs> anyone who's who ever listens to this, and is like, I was born without pain. Well, not like an idiot as in like, <laughs> like, but they would be hey, you're uh, a fucking idiot. Piece ignorant. Of shit. Ignorant is a better word. Ignorant. <laughs> yeah. uh, ignorant to um, mm. being able to position yourself right, like mm-hmm. not even just in a physical sense. Like so, uh, and I don't even know. Like if you can't, I'm trying to think. If you can't feel pain, can you feel pleasure? I would say no. Because it, feel, uh, how do you no know? More. How do you know no what? More. How do you know what pleasure is if you don't know what pain is? Well, I I think there's no uh, comparison. I think pleasure is just similar, because it's it's all it's, just similar like processes. Yeah. So I would assume you can't. Well, because it's either. a nerve ending. So yeah, if you don't feel your fucking okay, so could you flex? I would, I would assume there's could they, you, like people walk. That's flexing muscles, walking, moving. But I mean, could you could you feel the muscle engagement as you flex, or would you just? I would assume it'd be like an out of body experience where you're what literally just fuck? Yeah. watching. Yeah, because you, if you can't feel the, because like you curl your fingers, right? Yeah. And you feel them, you feel the ah, like the 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 response, you feel the pressure, you feel them curl. So it's like if you, it'd now, be now, like, you're, now you're just flexing on people. <laughs> like it would be like it's really cool feeling. <laughs> No, it would be so strange. It'd be like being so fucking blazed out of your mind that you think you're in someone else's body, but you're controlling them. So, I so forgot you're going camping. So if you can't feel pain, right? Mm-hmm. Um, can you like feel touch? Okay, now I'm I'm really guarantee not. Guarantee you can't feel anything. Okay, so I mean, let's say you're I'd numb. I'd like to be wrong about that. All right, let's like, let's. Okay, we might be wrong. We I don't know. We're not looking this up. This is completely candid. Yeah. Okay, we're never gonna look up anything. We yeah, fucking. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's put this in the realm of possibility. Let's say that you can't feel. Okay. Period. Period. It's like being numb, right? Numb. Mm. But being numb is it's like uh it's hard to control yourself because you can't feel anything. Yeah, because like so. Like if you sit on your fucking leg. Well, here's the other question. You know how we have the sense to tell where our limbs are without seeing them, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Does that only happen because we have touch? Yeah, I would imagine it does. Because, like, if it, obviously, like, I can see where my, like, I can, you can feel know where, where my your hand arm, is. Yeah. Only, but only because, like, I can feel, like, yeah, it goes up here. Your body's like, there. hey, your muscle's doing that, that muscle's doing that. Your, your, uh, you good? Yeah, we're still recording. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna move that. I would imagine keyboard. your brain calculates where. Obviously, I'm I'm not a fucking doctor. I don't know fucking dick about any of that. But I would imagine that your brain, the way you're able to uh, kind of tell where your limbs are, just by moving them without seeing them, is by your brain calculating what your muscles are doing and um, figuring out because it's not perfect. It's not, pretty close though. Oh, one hundred percent. Like it's it's a uh, general vicinity. Yeah, but it's like it's like hand-eye coordination too. Like, yeah. There's some people that are really shit at it. There are some people that are really good. That's the same kind of concept. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I want my hand here right now. Like, there's some people that can't fucking catch a ball, dude. There's some people that can't fucking. And then there's some people that's like, bam, right behind the back. Fuck you. <laughs> like, Got it. And it's I would imagine it has to do with like training as well. Is that? Like I would imagine it's obviously like training as well you're not born with any of that it's not an innate ability it's a trained ability at least mm-hmm. i would imagine i mean it is innate in the fact that it's a general principle when you're born yeah but you accrue it through time like obviously someone who um is a professional athlete has a better chance of having ha- hand-eye coordination than uh, an average person right because sure. it's it's accrued through their life um so furthering that, can you accrue it without feeling? Would you just have to try harder? <laughs> That's just, a really good question. Would you just have to believe? I would say if Cause... you can see the I hand. Hate Go ahead. So like like say you're playing catch with someone. Yeah. If you're playing catch forward and you're seeing someone, you could then use your visual like space of where your hand is at to catch a ball normally. 
But I, I feel like, you know, I don't like there's some catches where it's just like, oh, it's way over your head and you're just like, Oof, reach above your head and just catch yeah, it yeah. without looking at it. Because you yeah. know where it's going and you know like where your hand is. Yeah. I feel like that might be difficult just because. Would you feel catching the ball? No. I would imagine you'd feel the force of it, but that's it. Yeah, I, 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 I don't even know if you would feel the force. I think you would. Well, you would notice the force. Notice of, your hand moving back. Yeah, yeah. God, it'd be so fucking weird. <laughs> oh my god, could you imagine fucking any doing anything and not feeling anything? I. It's like the the whole like uh, explaining colors to blind people thing. So. Oh, have you ever seen Tommy Edison? Hold on, I, I had a thought. Okay. I was about to say, okay, we all have the same kind of brain, right? More or less. Well, like, uh, it's the same makeup. Yeah. And we have the same abilities, right? I'd like to at least think everyone has the ability to do anything everyone has ever done. Right? Oh, with, like, physical limitations aside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, everyone, like, everyone has the ability to have If you believe hard enough, you can do anything. Like, I mean... <laughs> Look, I'm I'm not a. Fr- it's you like the cheesiest. You can't, you can't fly. If you believe in yourself. You no, no, no. Can do anything but, you no, want. no, no, no. Th- th- this past year has changed my mind. But um, like honestly, if you try hard enough, you can do a lot of things. But what I'm saying is, I had that thought that oh, everyone has the same ability. But what if you can't feel anything? Is your brain different? Does it take input differently? I would imagine it would have to because it would adapt. I would think so. I would think uh, your feeling is like visual movements. Yeah, visual translated uh, different senses. Cause oh yeah, cause you wouldn't cause you wouldn't have touch. Mm-hmm. You would just have. And I could be completely wrong about those people who have like can't feel pain. They're like, dude, I can touch the acute just all. The, it's like, <laughs> like hell yeah, dude. This, this, this that's soft. This is this is hard. I just stabby things don't <laughs> like that's hurt. A, that's a pillow that's like uh, really soft. Like no, this is ridiculously hard. <laughs> but uh, but if we were to take you know touch completely out of our sensory 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 system, like other than uh, obviously like touch, taste, and hear and smell and all that shit. Mm-hmm. So if we were to take touch out, how different would we have to adapt? Like would that change our complete mind? I want to say yeah. Yeah, I have to. Because, like... Well, because how do you develop as a kid? By touching everything. Yeah, well, you're like... the uh, What was I watching? I think I was watching a documentary a long time ago about people who don't have the ability to touch or feel pain. Huh. And a lot of them grow up uh, with, like... Uh, some of them have, like... Like ridiculous scars all over their hands. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. Because like obviously you can't. Yeah. Oh, you can't be like, oh, that's hot, until you have no hands. Yeah, and it's like if especially if they like grew up in like areas where they didn't have like the medical attention. Yeah. To for the parents to know yeah. that they can't feel anything. Yeah. Then like they even they grow up even worse, and like oh, have like more scars. Thing. There was like one guy I saw who had like was missing fingers. That's another thing. How would you communicate to your parents before you could communicate that you don't feel pain? Or even after you could communicate. Because, like, you don't go... Because you don't know what pain is. Parent, yeah, parents That's don't a, go, It's a hey, construct. Hey, just so you know, that hurts. Yeah. What is hurt? I don't know what that means. So not even, like, you have to go beyond, like, learning Because there's English. no meaning to it. Yeah, you have to go beyond learning English to the yeah. point where you can discuss yeah. abstract feelings. Yeah. And that's, like... A bit further in. Because how do you explain pain? Just that. How do you explain it? Like, oh, it hurts. Okay, explain hurt. Yeah. Let's pretend for a second. Let's take a thought experiment, okay? Let's say, I like, I don't feel pain, right? I don't know any concept of the, the, the word of anything. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, you fucking, the stove's fucking hot. I go touch it. You say, don't fucking do that. It's hot. It'll hurt you. It's like, fucking what is hurt? If, if nothing's I, happening other than my fucking I'm cooking my hand right if I knew like you you didn't have like the pain receptors I obviously wouldn't try and use things like 
hurt Ooh, or pain. It would destroy. It would melt your skin. It, w- it will. Uh, <laughs> it will. Um, you, you could use things as in like damage. You, I guess you have to look at it in a, more of a standpoint as in like you are not only just a like an organism, but now we have to treat you as like a fucking machine. Yeah. Because it's like, look, you can repair yourself because you're organic, but you don't realize you're destroying yourself like a machine Mm -hmm. so you need to know that this will damage you what is damage you damage your your body too much yeah it will stop working yeah and i think that would be the weirdest part yeah about that is all of a sudden you can't move anything like say you like break something yeah and like it like you know pinches up nerves where you can't like you're like muscles and you can't activate your muscles or something like You want to close your hand, but... But you can't. Let's say your, your tendon fucking snaps, right? Yeah. Your big fucking... I forget what the tendon's called. But let's say your tendon snaps. And the first thing that it does, it's really creepy, is that your hand fucking closes. And mm. it's like a death grip. You can't get it open. They have to surgically go into your arm and fucking reattach the tendon. It's like a goddamn fucking rubber band. Oh, okay. So let's say that happens. It's like, when I have a permanent fist, like, what do I fucking do? And it's like... You wouldn't even... This is my punching hand. <laughs> this is my fucking razzle-dazzle. <laughs> Imagine fighting someone that doesn't feel pain. I feel they would... It might not be as different because you can still knock someone out like regular. Oh, absolutely. So well, actually, I think the only thing you would have to be afraid you? of could you? is their inhibitions. Oh, yeah, because they wouldn't feel, so, like, rushed or anything. Yeah, so, like, they wouldn't have any of that fear of being hurt. Like, oh, that's one thing. Do you think people who don't have the feeling of pain experience adrenaline? After, uh, after, uh, these messages. Brought to you by ads. Brought to you by ads. Do you like to have a sparkly, clean toilet wand? What is a toilet wand, you might ask? This is the. Is this the one that you like shove up your butthole? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. How'd you know? This has got bristles on it to clean everything, in, including bristles, including <laughs> pancreatic like, like, cancer. It's like a toothbrush. It is a toothbrush. I found it in your cabinet. It is a toothbrush. I feel like just ru- like rubbing <laughs> through my stuff. What is this thing? It's like a power okay. washer. Okay, back to this. I it's just, a buffer I just, for your butthole. Uh, it is. <laughs> that, we'll get to that in the next messages. All right, we're back, folks. Do you think people who don't feel pain experience adrenaline? I don't think so, because that's a fight or flight. I think it depends on what scares them. Like, yeah, you're right, because fear isn't always a pain-related thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I mean, I know that's like a, a major... Uh, uh, what was it? But, like, life or death thing wouldn't mean anything to you. I, or I feel like it would have a lot less meaning. Because let's say you're trapped under a rock, right? You don't feel the rock. You know, It's not hurting you. It's not making you uncomfortable. Well, I mean, I I think you would definitely be able to feel the effects. Like, I guess it depends on where the rock well, is. Well, obviously, if it's, like... If it's, like, if it's on like, your chest. Yeah, you, you couldn't breathe. I, I don't... I, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be able to feel the compression. Yeah. But you'd definitely be able to feel like the inability to like suck in as much air as yeah. normal. Yeah. And you would definitely start feeling the effects of the CO two buildup in your lungs. But would you freak out? I think once you start hyperventilating. True. And then you're like, you're I like, guess maybe Whoa, the scenarios okay. would be less. Is what I would think. The scenarios in which you experience um, adrenaline would be less. Possibly. At least the ones that are obviously derivative of like pain. Yeah, 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 being like injured, unless unless like you're like fully cognitive, like. I don't know. So the weirdest thing happened to me when I was in high school. So, um, when I was in high school, we did fucking uh, weight training, like everyone did. Mm. But um, I fucking dropped all the weight on my fucking index finger. That's why it's like fucking really flat and weird. Mm. And it exploded the tip. And I didn't feel anything. Like, nothing. Yeah. I didn't feel anything. And I looked at it, and it 
it's gonna sound gross, but it looked like, you know, like a, when you cut into a fucking, like, uh, like a fucking sausage. Yeah. How there's like a little bit of like fat in there mm-hmm. and it's just floating around. I mean, around. that's all we are. It's weird. Little, little wrapped like, up sausages. Well, it was weird because I was like, why? You would think it'd be like a layer, a layer, a layer, but no, there's shit floating around in there. Anyway, and the moment I looked at it, just the just like someone plunged a shot of adrenaline in my chest and i was like what the Ooh. fuck and i looked at it and i almost got sick just the side of my own and it wasn't the pain it wasn't anything mm. and i was like what the fuck and i was like that's fucked up and i remember going down to the auto like, shop yo check this out and I, the, I remember going down to the auto shop because of the uh, weight training room was uh, right above it. And I went to my auto shop teacher because I was good friends with him. And I was like, yeah, uh, I messed up my finger. Do you have some fucking tape or something to hold it together? I was like, Cause that, fuck the nurse. What are they going to do? They're going to fucking throw up or something. I don't give know. Give you an ice pack. Yeah, give me an ice pack and a fucking cup of noodle or something. Yeah. Something. Uh, so I went down to the auto shop. And I was like, I just need some tape or something to hold my finger together. And he's like, well, let me see it. And I was like, all right. And so I showed him. He's like, oh, my God, you need to go to the fucking hospital. I'm like, I don't feel anything. Like, so, the, and I still haven't since that day. And so I think the way that it happened is maybe it hit it just right to where it pinched the nerve to where it, there was no feeling. So I would imagine if you get hurt, it's kind of that same thing if you don't feel the pain. That the, the, the if there's a visual, it's like, oh. That's gross. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my god, that's me. That's part of me. That's gross. That's the insides. Are, the insides are coming out. My insides are on my outsides. So I would imagine it's kind of the same scenario. At least I would think. I I feel like yeah. Like obviously you would have like more weight on other types of fears, and like the adrenaline would kick in for other stuff. Yeah, like someone like they're afraid of like fucking heights or something yeah for sure but like would they be afraid of heights 100%. well because like why are people afraid of heights well because it'd be it's it's uh, a phobia well no i get that but phobias are are they come from what they come from the fear of like dying or like not necessarily because you have irrational fears that's true well, like, what's an irrational fear? Oh, hold on. I just let the camera... All right. Uh, back, back to these messages uh, brought to you by the uh, Toilet Wand. Uh, it works uh, very well on the uh, sphincter. Oh, yeah. Um, it works great on the sphincter. Multiple people uh, have used it. They bought it from me. I'm now a millionaire off of one toothbrush. Uh, anyway. My used butthole <laughs> toothbrush. <laughs> anyway... Um, so like, what's an uh, name an irrational fear? I'm blanking. Oh. Um, an irrational fear? Yeah, like uh, the fear of holes. Yeah, but like, why would someone be afraid of a hole? Like, you mean like a hole in the ground? It's just holes in general. Oh, I know what you're talking um, about the uh, the one where they're really close together. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Um, like the surface trip- trypophobia. Yeah, where it looks like a bunch of fucking weird things. Yeah. Yeah, but there was a guy who debunked that. Debunked it as like not actual fear, or it's like a, he he dissolved it into a fear of something else that is related to that, and that's why you're afraid of it. I can see that. Um, because all fears have a root. Oh, I would definitely say so, all fears have some sort of root. It's like a, a, um, arachnophobia. It's like obviously it's like the most common, right? Uh, either that or the fear of heights. Yeah, those are like the arachnophobia. Fear of heights and, like, fear of the dark. Yeah. Now, obviously, it's not, like, scientifically proven. It's uh, You can't scientifically prove a construct, right? Fear is a construct. Get mm. over it. So, but people have derived the fear of, uh, uh, like, arachnophobia. Uh, they've uh, determined that, well, not determined, but figured out that maybe that we're innately, some people are innately born with arachnophobia because of long-stemming uh, genetic, like, um, like learning tool what is what is it called it's like a um not a predetermined but a fear of something that uh like may hurt you mm-hmm. and um like you, i think i think definitely like the fear of the unknown fits into arachnophobia yeah because well, it's, it's like so different from you 
Yeah, because it's, it's completely it's, different, especially for like people. Uh, like you look into people who know more things about spiders, the like arachnophobia seems to like decline down to yeah, almost no. zero. No, yeah, because it's like so. It's it's more like the more you know, the less you're afraid of it. So, um, like when I was a kid, I was never afraid of something hurting me. Mm. That was not my first concern. So like I would just pick up things, like whether it be a fucking dog cat or a spider and obviously being a kid you're around other kids other kids are fucking normal people they're not fucking freaks they're <laughs> afraid of spiders and shit like that yeah. um but i've never been bitten by a spider in my entire life and i've been like i've literally gone out of my way to pick up spiders oh yeah like it's like it's a testament it's all fucking it's just circumstance mm -hmm. if you fucking freak out it's a good chance that the spider's gonna be like wow you're gonna fucking kill me because you're fucking freaking out right now. So it's like, that's fucking... That, uh, for some reason, that just remind, reminded me of, like, uh, uh, what is it? Have you, have you heard, like, the, the flies, uh, travel at a, uh, faster speed than we do? And so, like, they perceive time. No, no, it's that their metabolism. Their, so their metabolism, any, any uh, organism, where their metabolism is much faster, uh, or coherently, you could also say, like, whales. Their metabolism, metabolism is much slower. Mm -hmm. So do they perceive time slower? Yeah, that, that was the, the, the question. It's like, is is size what determines your perception, perception of time? time? I would say yes. Obviously, because, like, with flies that are smaller, like, uh, the reason why they can avoid our hands so easily is because our hands are moving... Well, yeah, because we have so much mass behind it. It's yeah. a whole thing. It's like quantum physics, right? The smaller something gets, the more, um, the less complicated it has to be. Mm -hmm. So the less mass it has, you know, everything adds up, right? So if, like, fucking, um, I forget the specific species of fly, but it's one of the smallest flying insects in the world. The smallest. Oh, fairy flies. They don't even have wings. They have paddles. Like they little... just go... <laughs> no. And like, just like blow themselves into the air. If you look at air. a picture of their wings, they look like little paddles. Like, they're so tiny that it takes literally nothing to get them airborne. <laughs> like... What's their what's their wing to body ratio? Nothing! <laughs> like, literally, it would be well, like... it would have to be something. No! Look at it! Look it up! Look at a fairy fly! It's fucking ridiculous! It's or, or maybe I'm thinking the wrong name, but it would be the smallest flying insect. It's it's ridiculous. What? It's uh, it's pretty big. Oh yeah. That's a uh, airplane. In a helicopter. <laughs> Fucking, but it's like this. It's like on the ground. Is it spelled something different? Maybe. Well, just oh, look in, up. insect. Okay. Yeah. You didn't. You know how to spell insect. Well, I I just put fairy fly. I didn't realize fairy. You got a picture? Uh, Let me see. Fairy flies or a fairy wasp. Yeah. Well, okay. Annoying? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, there's a smaller one, but yeah, you're right. But they don't. So I guess what I was getting at, or what I seem to misremember, like the hairs on there. I miss. Yeah. Well. Is that Just they, they floats don't? Floats in the trunk. Yeah. But oh see, yeah, look jump at the, in the trunk there. See, look, the pads aren't even that big. It'd be like us putting our hand out, because like, look at the. 1,400 species of fairy flies. Yeah. It's technically a wasp. Yeah. Okay. Ranging from 0.5 to 1 millimeter long. Jesus. Yeah, dude. It's, uh, it's small enough to where you'd have to replace your brakes. <laughs> 0.5? Fucking metal to metal, motherfucker. Yeah. But, so, like... The smaller you get, the... Uh, and also, they're some of the most simple multi-cell organisms. Beep. Jesus. Yeah. They're just, like, as white as, like, a fingerprint. Yeah, like, some of them don't have hearts. They rely on the temperature difference of, like, the air around them and their blood. Jeez. It, it, I, I'm assuming it took us until recently fairly recently with microscopes to be able to tell the genders of these oh flies. my god right where's your dick let me see that somebody let me see that pee pee <laughs> so i would have to imagine that 
uh, size does determine how you perceive time. So that means anything that's perceived differently is, and there is no, it's fluid. It's not concrete. Time is not concrete. Do you think, on top of their size, how fast they move is also how they would perceive, perceive time? You mean like if a person could run 60 miles an hour, we would perceive time differently? Mm, maybe not necessarily. I would say yes. And here's my thought. Look at it like this. You perceive time as you do right now as you're able to get in a car, travel, you know what, 60 miles in an hour or under an hour mm -hmm. at relative speed. Obviously, you could go fucking faster than that. But what I'm saying is an average person... You can get in a car, travel 60 miles in an hour. Let's just say that. Now you go back in time. Even just uh, 100 years in 1920. Well, let's go back to the 1900s, right? Mm -hmm. Where cars... I mean, I think you could probably even argue close to the 1920s. Cause no, it's like... no, there were race cars back then. Well, I mean, like just like the average person. Because like, you wouldn't have... like Now I feel like we have our our social mentality has increased in speed because information now moves well, let's, way let, quicker. Let's, we'll get to that later. <laughs> we'll get to that later. What I'm getting at is let's say you're in a time period where you can no longer travel 60 miles in an hour. Mm. Now you are metered to, let's say, 20 miles in an hour. So that means to get to 60 miles in an hour, it would take you three hours. Three hours. Mm. I think that the way you perceive time is much differently now because that's the fastest you know of traveling. You're like, hey, I got to go to fucking my parents' house. They're fucking three days away. I'm going to spend three of my fucking days in my life traveling mm -hmm. to go 60 miles. Yeah, because my parents live uh, 85 miles away. So, well, it's like, it's like fucking, well, not three days, three hours. Um, so it's like, I think that your perceived notion of time is different depending on how fast you can travel. Because let's say this. Oh, what if uh, in a future not so far away and, you know, all that shit where we could fucking teleport, right? Whatever means of teleportation. We're not going to discuss the fucking physics behind it or anything. Let's just say you could hit a button and all of a sudden you're wherever you want to be. Mm hundred -hmm. percent that would change your perception of time because you wouldn't view time as an obstacle anymore yeah. time is the obstacle the vehicles that we use to overcome it is how we view it mm -hmm. that's how i think it is and you could also argue that in the same sense of uh like um uh communication Time is the obstacle. The vehicle of communication is what we use to overcome it. So, like, uh, computers, uh, you know, fucking cell phones, stuff like that. Because, like, what if we had cell phones in a fucking uh, Civil War, dude? We would w Anyone who had a cell phone in the Civil War would win. doesn't matter. You could have two fucking people. <laughs> You'd be like, hey, they're over here. Okay, bam. Hey, they're over there. Bam. Oh, they're doing this. You would instantly know. Not only that, but I think that uh, communication in general, language in general, is also an obstacle. It is a, a vehicle for overcoming time, because let's say you can communicate something much faster inherently in the language itself. Mm -hmm. um, without, like, let's say there was a word that encompassed an entire scenario, and that's all you had to say for someone to comprehend the scenario. Oh, we already have stuff like that. Well, that's what I'm saying. Then it would that would and defeat that the entire up. conversation. Until you find someone who doesn't know what that means. And then it slows it down. Oh, it's deja vu. What? It's a deja vu. Like memes. What is, what is that? Like it could be in the memes. Like memetics and stuff like that. that yeah, that, yeah. That, is, that explains an entire scenario. 100%. That in itself. I think we're getting to the point of this, this convergence of information, <laughs> right? Where things are going to get so fucked and so overlaid that it's going to be so hard to understand anything. I think either 
we will grow with it. Oh no, a hundred percent. What I'm saying is like if you didn't grow with it, you'd be absolutely under- or or the change wouldn't matter enough to even notice unless you go from one generation the beginning of a generation to the end of another generation. Yeah. You will have and to And you would only notice it be just by comparing the extreme ends. Yeah. I think that um the problem is not that the older you get the less likely you are to learn things because the only th- I think that in my own terms the only reason that is true is because you're less likely to try to learn things. Mm-hmm. It's not that, it's, that you're less likely to learn things. It's that you're less likely to try. That's what I think it is. So let's say like obviously like fucking boomers and stuff like that. Fucking boomers. They uh, you know, I'm not trying to talk as in like oh they this they that. Um, but if I'm gonna generalize something, let's say that I when I'm old, right? In fucking sixty years time, let's say I'm fucking old as shit. I'm eighty fucking years old. You think I'm gonna give a shit about what kids have to say? Fuck I it. already don't care. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it, it's like the same thing. So the more the less you give a shit about um, what society thinks, the less you're going to evolve communication wise. Mm-hmm. Because you use communication to to convey messages in a society, and nothing else. Mm-hmm. You don't fucking use it to talk to plants. You don't use it to fucking make things. I mean, for fuck's sake, you could work on a car and not know any fucking language. Hundred percent. You, I've fucking worked on cars, and I didn't. When I was fucking first starting out, I didn't know what anything was fucking called. Yeah. I learned it in a fucking book, and I was calling shit like old terms. Yeah. Like I'll fucking, I'll catch myself calling things like fucking. The blinker box. The blinker box. <laughs> no, the ding ding box. No, uh, like uh, like. What's a blinker box? You mean the blinker relay? Like, and the, the, you know what I'm talking about, though. Huh? Well, like, and not to get too deep into this topic, but like. If you start out from the beginning of anything, and that beginning of a concept was before your time, you'll begin to realize it gets more confusing because the times they're overlaid, redacted, reused mm-hmm. is infinitesimal. So like an all-wheel drive car, right? Okay, what does that mean? That means, presumably, all four wheels are spinning mm-hmm. at the same time. So, when I was starting out being a mechanic, and when I was a kid, I learned about four-wheel drive vehicles, right? So, it's fucking... And four-wheel drive, that stuff, the concept has always, always been around, right? Obviously, it's been cheaper to just have things rear-wheel drive back in the fucking 20s, 30s. And some cars were front-wheel drive, some cars were four-wheel drive. But it wasn't a commonplace... In the fucking 20s to have a four-wheel drive truck. Mm -hmm. For fuck's sake, even male carrier trucks were still two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive. They just had bigger tires so they could go through snow and shit like that. Yeah. Because it wasn't a commonplace thing. There was a lot of things that, like materials that that, um, limited our progress on things. And and, uh, functionality, like uh, the concepts of, you know, uh, um, U-joints and and the technology wasn't there yet. Um, because people hadn't used it from other things. But what I'm getting at is all-wheel drive vehicles and four-wheel drive vehicles, that term you have to kind of disassociate with because an all-wheel drive vehicle, as you think of now, is actually less all-wheel drive than a four-wheel drive vehicle. And a four-wheel drive vehicle is actually more all-wheel drive than a all-wheel drive vehicle. And what I mean is that a all-wheel drive vehicle utilizes a transaxle which takes power and directs it from the engine to all four corners Mm -hmm. the problem is that once you lose power to one corner you lose power to the rest and a four-wheel drive it has a transfer case so the power is split between the front and rear meaning if you lose power to the rear you still have power to the front because it's split it's not parent. It's they're not shared. Mm-hmm. So if you were to have a four wheel drive truck from any generation, like an old fucking four wheel drive truck, and just leave it in four wheel drive, 
it would actually be more all-wheel drive than an all-wheel drive vehicle. Mm -hmm. The problem with that, of course, is, you know, Ackman's angle, you have to be able to turn. And turning, that requires different speeds of rotation different on the inside. For each tire and yeah, stuff on like the that. inside and outside of the tire. Mm -hmm. And that's fine if you have, like, open differentials, which allow the, the axles to spin at different speeds. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not... Um, it's not... Uh, uh, What's the word? It's it's not um necessarily a good scenario for the front differential because it has to not only turn at, in a in a means of motion, but it has to also rotate. Mm -hmm. So the reason there are all-wheel drive vehicles is to counter that, so that way you can still have it in quote unquote four-wheel drive while not having the downfall of binding. But the it's it's like a little bitch version of four wheel drive. Any four wheel drive, I don't care who you are, fight me on this. Any four wheel drive is inherently better than an all wheel drive. The only thing that makes an all wheel drive better is the invention of traction control and ABS. And you can fight me on this term too, <laughs> because you can build logic into the computer to realize, oh, this axle slipping, engage the brakes, and that'll engage the other axle without. Mm -hmm. ABS or traction control, it will not do that. So it will act as an open differential, which means you will literally have no wheel drive. So that's what I mean by there's all these terms that overlap each other that don't mean anything. And that's just in one field that I know. Yeah. When it is, is cars. And, and it's, it's so confusing for people who don't understand how that works because it's like, well, actually this and actually that and this actually. and that. And then I feel like the asshole that's correcting people, but it's like, these are things that have been around for over a hundred years. This, this technology is not, no technology really is new. Mm -hmm. It's implemented differently. 100%. There was a, there was a term and I can't remember what it is. Um, but it's like when we use old terms for new technologies, yeah. Um, like email. Got it. Like mail is obviously an old term from long time ago. Yeah. And it's like email is not the same thing as mail. No. It's the same concept of spreading a message. Yeah. Um, but like, I gotta, I gotta figure what, what that word was. Well, it's like the whole controversy. You ass stinks. You fuck. I know I'm comfy, but I need you to get out of here. You, Just pick her up and throw her off. Get out. Oh, my God. You stink. You're stinky. <laughs> Hold Just, on, folks. We got a fucking stinky fucking... I don't want to say it. <laughs> this cat loves me, and I don't know why. She loves everyone. She wants to be, like, up on your neck. Yeah, Just push her off. Um, what was I saying? Uh, we were talking about terms for old things that we use for new things. Oh, email and, um, what was I getting to? Fucking, I don't know. But, um. We can go back in the recording later. Right. And bring it up next time we, we do this. Right. So, it's like, um, you have to invent a new word just as fast as you're inventing new things. And since that doesn't always happen, you're relying on the, um prelude you're relying on what came before mm -hmm. so it's always the easiest way to name things is yeah. it is oh that's what i was getting to it's like the controversy my court alone it's like the controversy but god i can't fucking talk to you contra verse versi yeah between motor and engine there's a controversy well what's a motor Um, something that translates some sort of energy into rotational energy. Yeah, exactly. But it was used for uh, electric generators and electric motors. Okay. So that would that and engines were an internal reciprocating uh, form of, of uh, energy. So it was internal combustion. So an, okay. a, an engine is specifically an internal combustion reciprocating. Um, transfer of energy and a motor 
is just an electric reciprocating form of energy. Okay. So, but motor and engine are... They realize that was like a big controversy. Yeah, people are like, oh, motors and electrical engines. Because people call motor... But what's motor other than? Motorcycle. What's motorcycle then? What's all these things? (laughs) You don't say engine cycle. What kind of fucking weird planet yeah. motherfucker are you? What kind of about? engine cycle you just, So it's like, well, it's because, and I don't know, it's like the chicken and the egg. I, I, I really don't know which one actually came first, the electric motor or the engine. Because you could argue that. I like the electric motor. Well, hold on. Clearly a steam engine came first. 100%. Uh, well, I mean, I guess... It... Well, what was the first form of fucking electric motor? What would we have used it for? What would it be I, I guess it depends on, like, what you want to determine as... Well, what would you determine? I guess it would definitely be, like, straight up electricity. That's not a motor, though. But then... Not, like, electricity by itself, but, like, using, like, the harness power of electricity. Because I was thinking of, could you also then use... Like a windmill as a motor. Like as a p- no, type of motor. No, it's a generator. A generator is something that takes rotation and turns into electricity. A motor is something that takes Well, I was thinking uh, like when you, you would use a, like a, obviously the energy from the water to rotate it. That's your generator. Yeah, like a water wheel. But then you would have it on a gear system. Yeah, but they didn't do that. To, yeah, they did. They did no, the, mo- like, the moment, no, what you're saying is you're, you're explaining a generator. No, 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 I'm talking about like what they then took that output yes. or that input and made it into output to grind flour. Uh, That's why it's called a windmill. Yeah, but there's no. What do you. You ever seen the inside of a windmill? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> no, it's, I haven't. It's, it's a gear system. Yeah, but that's not electric. Uh, well, that's all, that's all I was like. I was like trying to say like. Uh, uh, and I, I know I said windmill, but then I was talking about a water wheel. Yeah, I know. It confused um, <laughs> me. I was like, okay, windmill, water wheel. Okay, I'm trying to follow it. Same, same principle. Okay. But it's like uh, a windmill obviously will turn gears and have a mill inside yes. that rotates a stone I, wheel to yes, grind it. Yes, I understand. But I was trying to understand where you're getting at with the electric part. But I was saying, like, can you count I'm not that talking about can. As, a, as a motor, though? Uh, because no. obviously you're not using electricity itself. You're still using energy to transfer into how, rotational. How I would classify a motor. So hold on. So we're, we'll get back to the electric. <laughs> and the, how I would classify a motor is a power plant. Is something that is um, confined to a certain allotted amount of space. That Like a windmill. That makes. <laughs> that takes energy and i guess you could say it is a motor because you're taking energy converting it into something else Mm -hmm. um okay so let's say this um because let's break it all the way down Uh, an electric motor is taking uh, electrical energy and turning it into mechanical energy a engine whether it be gas diesel is taking chemical energy and turning it into mechanical energy. Mm-hmm. So I think it just has to... A motor could just be something that converts energy. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I was yeah. thinking of. So, because it's like, obviously, yeah, like in an electric motor, you're taking electricity and moving it into, you know, rotational en- energy through the motor. So I guess But we'll, you have to create that electrical energy yeah. with a generator. Well, okay, so here's the thing. So a generator... Yeah, I, yeah. So a generator is essentially, so a motor, an electric motor is just a generator in reverse. Yes. You can take an alternator right off your car right now. Yep. And obviously with the proper... Uh, Slap that on a downpipe and you got a uh, water energy. <laughs> what? No, no, no. What I was getting at is with the, with the proper wiring and know-how, you can make that into a motor. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. You, you could take, yeah, you could literally put it on a longboard, put a little belt, put a little battery. There you go. That's your motor. Mm-hmm. And in reverse, it will make energy. I mean, like, because uh, that's that's just an alternating current. Uh-huh. So, like, uh, 
I don't know much about alternating. Well, it alternating. works with old generators, like 6-volt and 12-volt generators. You know how to tell if a generator works? What do you mean? It's not like the old days. So, like, in the 40s and 50s, all the way up to where they stopped using uh, DC current. Mm. So, like, I know Dodge was really fucking slacking, and they fucking kept using it all the way to, like, I want to say the early fucking 60s. <laughs> And everyone else was like, no, 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 1956, we're done. Alternators. Um, well, Ford did have a 12-volt generator. But anyway, how to, te- how to test would be to uh, reverse the current and see if the generator starts motoring, which means if the generator starts spinning. Hmm. And that was a poor man's way to check, oh, yeah, it works. Clearly, clearly taking energy. So yeah. There's not a dead um, reluctor or anything in there. Or not reluctor, but a, a com- commutator. He's eating your uh, toilet brush. Grass. Okay. Jesus. Yeah. So th- that furthers the term is like, um, what came first? What term came first? Where are the, um, the, uh, the um the evolution of language which which term motor or engine i feel like motor came first you think so i think engine came around as to be specific to like when were they like you? internal well cuz okay engine we all know that steam locomotive locomotion they call it a steam engine mm-hmm. So we know that term has been around since steam, since uh, the, you know, obviously like 18, late 17, 16. How far does that go back? I can't even remember. Far fucking back. Mm. And that's way before the first, um, like, advent of, like, generators and stuff like that. Or at least implementing electricity. Mm Mm-hmm. Or even fucking discovering it. So, where did the word motor come from? I'm gonna I'm gonna take a shot in the dark and say it's like Latin or Greek or some shit. It's gotta be. It's always Latin or Greek. Because we were talking about email. Mail mail is an old word, right? Mail was used to describe physical fucking paper that you got in the little piece of shit box at the end of your road. Mm-hmm. So where did motor come from? Uh, from the Greek motos, which means... <laughs> which means, fuck you. <laughs> I'm going somewhere, bitch. He's out of here. Yeah, it's like a uh, evolution of fucking language. Loan words and shit. There's yeah, Jesus Just Christ. steal from everything. Jesus. Actually, that wouldn't be a real loan word if we're not no. pronouncing it the same way they pronounce it. but Or spell it the same way. Um, cause, cause without like changing, um, without changing your ability to conquer time, essentially, that's what we're doing. We're just conquering time or trying to, Mm. Uh, everything we do, essentially, we're just trying to combat the, uh, ever progressing form of time. Yeah. Uh, vehicles, uh, media, and even some things are invented to directly, inherently um, make time pass. Entertainment. Cryo chambers. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I am 100% You're believing ch- yeah? that we will eventually be able to... <laughs> you can't, okay? You good? Okay, we're good. Yeah. Um, you 100% believe that one day... Cryo chambers will be a thing? Look. And do people already in cryostasis? They're dead. It's already a thing. No, they're dead. No, they're already they're alive. Dead. In the, it's already the future for Look, them. No, 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 no. They're looking back at us and going, ha ha, fuck you guys. Jesse. I lived in that generation. It was garbage. They're dead because so they I froze don't... myself. <laughs> so here's the thing. Yeah, uh, I believe so too, but we need to invent... Um, a, uh, a a form of um, something that would go into your blood to keep it from crystallizing. 
Hundred percent. That's all we need. Well, not yeah. all, obviously. That's just. Well, I think what they what they do now is I think they drain the blood. Yeah. Okay. And replace it with a non-crystallizing fluid. And then we would have to figure out how cold you would have to get and how slow you could get your metabolism. Because yes, there are forms of life that do that. It's like catatonic state. Mm -hmm. And there are forms of life that can do that for a very long time. But they're all simple. They're very simple. They don't fucking have language. They don't fucking fly around in cars. They don't fucking meme on people. And they just that's just not a life to live. They just eat shit and die. Yeah. And but they in that order. <laughs> in that order. My uh, my favorite thing to watch is uh, the chimpanzee memory test. Oh wow, they can recall really fast. Yeah. And like the the theory that like. We lost that ability no, 100%. to speak. Yeah, hundred percent. Because it's like there's there's no real use of that much short term memory. Just think of how many things we've lost throughout our entire time of being a, like a um. It's like a it's a gradient, so you can't say as a human because what is a human? But mm -hmm. think of how many things we've had to lose to get where we are now. Mm hmm. Like, could you imagine if we decided instead of running that we were going to continue climbing trees? Like how our, our back fucking, wouldn't hurt. How our, yeah, and not yeah. only that, but how our big toe would still be looking like our hand. How yeah. our feet would look relatively like our hands. And there are some people that are still born like that. It's recessive. There are so many genes that we have that are recessive. That's another thing that's fucking wild. What if you could? What if you wanted a, a, a recessive gene to not be recessive anymore? What if you had that ability to choose that? We already have abilities like that. What? Have you heard of the, the argument of designer babies? Oh, you're right. But that's simple things like eye color and hair color. The, the, that's just the start of their like studies. Well, yeah. Like we are already I at the ability. I want my baby to have seven million toes. Hell yeah. Obviously it'd have to be within the realm of whatever. Nice. Don't you fucking bite that. Well, yeah. Like I want my, I want my kid to, um, to have better fucking... Yeah. Physical fucking strength. I want. I want a buff baby. I feel like that would be easy to find, because we already have. Well, it's just muscle development. Yeah. Well, like there's there's like a, a specific gene that like develops the the chemical that helps increase muscle mass easier. Yeah. And like just between like men and women, like you, you can just find that gene. That does that and like that's free testosterone, baby. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you got you got testosterone from birth, yeah. just coming out looking Fucking like, like a jack a little, motherfucker, little goopy goopy Hulk. Bit. Oh god. Yeah, flesh colored Hulk. <laughs> First thing you did when you got out, is you started fighting. God, but like uh, that's like another term. It's like. We kind of got off topic with the whole pain and all that stuff, but could you imagine? Off topic? We started on that topic. <laughs> well, that was the topic. Yeah. No, what I'm saying is we got oh, off, off, of to off from, from that. Okay. Yeah, this is... I like, a, a, I like the idea of having, like, no specific topic. No, 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 no. That's, that's <laughs> the point of the show, is that it's like a... a, a, a I wouldn't say evolution. I would say a de-evolution or degeneration of conversation. Degeneration, the podcast. Um, What if... You could communicate, or what if you were a gorilla? What if you could? What? How fucking ripped could you get? Or do you think that's just? What if? Okay, hold on. I just thought of something. What if they just have the ability to? Um, that is the muscle. That's the most muscle they can have. What if that they have a gene? That just causes their muscle to grow, and that's just what it is. Grow to the max. Yeah. So like, like no, you... that's just what they're already at. No, 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 no. I know. So like, like obviously, as they they're not like the max from birth, right? So, but like their genes will increase their muscle mass no, all what, the way what up I'm to, their, saying to their max is, ability. Is I've had this conversation before. Is what if um, a gorilla you could train it to. Um, you, you could teach it how to work out and stuff like that. Would it, in fact, uh, increase uh, muscle More mass? More muscle mass. Well, here's a counter-argument. What if they already have as much muscle? 
I feel like that's the more logical. Because, but I feel like over generations, yeah, you want to, yeah, you want to believe you could that they increase get super. That. I, I don't think they could get any more because you look at a gorilla and it's like they couldn't survive with much more because they they would sacrifice so much mobility. But I think that's when you would start developing a society if you could enclose gorillas into like like a giant area right yeah. enough to where like it's not like a zoo you know they it's like a sanctuary obviously but like you gate anything else out that would harm it yeah. and have like the ability to teach them to work out yeah and they do work out yeah can their muscle size increase over time similar to ours or are we already hitting our max of our capable muscle mass. Because, like, obviously some dudes just get super jacked. Well, it's like this. It's like this. Uh, Is gorilla the max muscle? Well, and also, I mean, their physiology. If we're, we can't compare us to gorillas. We cannot. I mean, we can't. That's, no. how, that's how comparing works. No, no, we can't. Because <laughs> they, they... Have you ever seen a gorilla's fucking skull? Yeah, it's ridiculously gigantic. Not even, not even the size of it, but the shape of it. The shape. Yeah. Have you ever seen the, the shape of a gorilla skull? I want to say yes. Okay, so, you know they have a big fucking crown. That's where their back muscles attach. They're makes sense. They don't rely on a little bitch neck like we do. <laughs> they don't rely like, on that. They don't. <laughs> they don't do that. <laughs> They have they 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 got fucking goddamn turbo muscles, <laughs> going from their fucking back to their fucking <laughs> skull, dude. Yeah. They could bench press with their mouth. <laughs> I swear to God, you cannot compare. And well, here's the thing. So, I think that as humans, uh, the gene has become more and more recessive uh, to create muscle. Good. Uh, as we uh, continue. As a species. Yes. And the reason I think that is because it, we don't need it anymore. 100% agree. Um, is that we do not, we don't rely, it was, obviously, generally, we don't rely on it. There are very physical jobs that rely on that. But I think that that's why, because it's, it's simpler. It makes your body plan simpler. Yeah. It makes your caloric intake a lot less. Um, it makes you uh, highly mobile. You're able to do different things. Mm. I think that if you were to think of it this way, um, now, as human stands, we start out as like kind of like a blank slate, mm -hmm. and life is what determines what genes will inevitably activate. Um, obviously, that's not scientific, but um, if you were to kind of compare it to like a gorilla mm. I think a gorilla comes into this world and it's like you need all of this to survive you literally need all of this you need and it. not even to like fight off all these like creatures just, just to, to fight off other gorillas yeah who have the same muscle structure yeah that's what I think it is I don't think it's that they would get any more buff I think they would stay the same because I think that over you know millions of years they, your, their genes have evolved to be like, you need this, you need this, you need this. Over millions of years of us, our genes are like, look, we don't need that anymore. We'll cool it. We're good. We're living the easy life right now. We don't need this right now. Mm -hmm. But Grill is like, you fucking need all of this right now, right out of the fucking womb, or you're going to die. Use it now. Yeah. <laughs> fucking stinky butthole cat, dude. Flippy flappies. It's their, it's their, uh, their, their defense gooch. Their defense the cat fucking loves me, man. It's because she, she knows that I don't let her lay on me. Oh. I just go, get out of here. I'm Jesse. <laughs> the cat is like, there you go. Determined. Yeah. Um, I think that's what it is. I don't think a gorilla would get buffed. I think it's just already buffed. I, I feel like you, like, 
I could agree there. Because it's like this. I would love to see. Oh, one hundred percent. I want to. I want to know how much one would lift. I would want to see. Uh, what would happen if gorillas got into like a civilization like ours? Oh, you mean if they just, still had the same muscle mass, but they had the know-how? Yeah. Because like, and, they're but just... like, uh, watch over the like the hundreds of generations. Yeah. And just watch their muscle mass decline. Oh, hundred. As they don't longer like no yeah. longer need it. No, hundred percent. Because look at proto man, Neanderthals, they would kick your ass. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent. But then, but then, you get into fucking like the Middle Ages. We kick their ass, just based on the fact that we're nourished. Yeah. <laughs> they're dying. They're eating <laughs> bread. That's all. They're, they're eating, not even eating bread. They're eating crushed up wheat. Yeah. That they that like isn't even like the good wheat. Yeah, it's crap. It's like full of they're bugs. They're eating shit and dying. They're good, they have a good protein diet. So. Have you heard the, the idea of like what their voice sounds like? Whose voice? The Neanderthals. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's like high pitched. <laughs> 100%. Like, I just imagine, like, them trying to, like, pick up chicks. Have, have you heard... And they just club them over the head because their voice sucks. Oh, yeah. Have you, um... So, there's a theory out there. And I was watching a video on it. Talking about Neanderthals. Mm-hmm. Um... I'm gonna need you to, like, knock that off and get out of here. Go. Go, go, go. Get out. Get out. Um... So, you know how scientists, like, have, like reconstructed their facial shit and sh- like that mm. most of that aren't uh, neanderthals it's uh, mainly uh, homo sapiens mm. um someone actually did like a uh a uh, step on step neanderthals are terrifying looking and the reason is because their eyes their eye sockets are much higher their eye sockets are like three inches higher than ours that's like that. And their head is like that. Jesus. So if you were to encounter Neanderthal, and this is what this guy was talking about, you wouldn't even recognize it as a... You would. It would be a monster. An alien. It would look... Because it would have a protruded brow, yes. Mm. But the eyes aren't in the right spot. They have such big cheekbones. It looks like... You ever see Terraform Mars? The anime. No. Leg- that's their. That's what they fucking. That's their inspiration behind the fucking cockroach monsters, is the faces. Look it up. Fucking so. Terraform Mars is an anime. Uh, about a. Uh, is it terror? Ter- terraform or terraform. Terraform okay. Mars. So like terraformers, but terraform Mars. It's an anime about, in the fucking future, they fucking put cockroaches on fucking Mars to fucking see how life and shit, and anyway, they fucking evolved super fucking fast into fucking their own, like, upright fucking mother... Yeah. That's what... I have seen this picture before. That's what they I would... I thought this was a meme. No, that's what they this would... This looks look... like Ubungu. That... What? You ever seen Ubungu? <laughs> Look, man, this is a... We're not trying to get on those topics. Oh, Bung... Oh, my God, yeah. Why do they look so similar? I assume it's... Based uh, on that? Oh, Bung... Who the fuck is Obungu? Yeah. We're destroyed to resemble roach creatures from the manga Terraformers. Got it. So, yeah. So that's what people have speculated what they'd actually look like. Like, relatively. But that's... So on... <laughs> fucking Jesus Christ so um, obviously not that exaggerated but it's terrifying yeah and there's actually theories on like why there was in, like inbreeding and why like there was like evidence of like them fighting and stuff like that this is all speculation but it's like can you imagine encountering one of those motherfuckers I would shit myself they weren't very big like, they were, like, and I'm using this as a generalization. I'm sure there were big motherfuckers. But the ones we've found are, like, you know, five six, five seven, average human height. But stocky, built like a brick shithouse. They're the inspiration for dwarves. Yeah. Fucking two-by-fours, dude. 
<laughs> You're fighting a rock. <laughs> You're fighting the short rock. Oh, yeah. Dwayne Johnson. I meant a rock as Shorty in like, Johnson. Shorty Johnson. Little, jo- little, little nasty. Shorty. <laughs> little nasty, little nasty Johnson. <laughs> Shorty the Pebble Johnson. But so like, that was in a time period where we needed a bunch of strength. And our body plan was catered towards that. Now, in the same time... And here's the other thing. Neanderthals, they were around for a long time. Like, a long time. And then Homo sapiens came around, right? Homo sapiens look nothing like that. They look like us. Relatively, Mm -hmm. obviously. But there are, like, genes, like... And a lot of, like, people who are obviously, like, descendant of, like you know, Eastern European, you know, fucking white people and shit like that, Mm -hmm. that um, obviously have Neanderthal genes. And and that's why we're like fatter, shorter, shit like that. You know, that's why fucking um, typically like um, people who are from like Egypt, Africa, stuff like that, they're more slender. Um, But like that was in, they were in the same time period at one point in time. Mm -hmm. So... Fucking dog, man. Oh my god, I'm gonna fucking see you. (laughs) But, so I wonder if, like... Because there is a disease that activates that recessive gene in animals and people. Mm -hmm. You ever seen it? Like the buff cows and the buff dogs? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a disease, I guess, what you would call it, that activates that gene. Um, so I wonder if gene, like the gene that is responsible for that is already activated in uh, most gorillas. Because if you notice, like silverback gorillas, super buff. Super buff. Regular gorillas, not so buff. So it's like that gene has got just got to come from somewhere. Got to come from somewhere. Yeah. I definitely think that like they're either at their max or very close to the max. Yeah. Because like goddamn fucking six hundred pound motherfuckers like. Well, here's the thing. There's a fucking... Fucking gorillas and chimpanzees fight a lot. And they didn't used to. They mm-hmm. think that... So, and this is a wild... This was on the news. Um, it's like... Um, there's like a... Whatever you call it. A troop. Chimpanzees. That encountered the gorillas. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually they're peaceful. They haven't been. Uh, and they're trying to study why. Hmm. Chimpanzees. Uh, I'd rather... Um, fuck around with literally anything. Like gorillas. Anything. Bear. I don't care. Chimpanzees. Fuck that. That is the one animal in my entire life I never want to encounter in my entire life. Please ever. don't, uh, please don't come near me, chimpanzee. Yeah, no. A hundred percent. They'll fucking, they will kick your ass and then eat you. Straight up eat your face. No, yeah, it's chimpanzees, dude. Chimpanzees. They have a fucking... They got all the strength. Mm-hmm. And all the little body. Oh, yeah. Like, god damn. I don't even understand, dude. It's a mockery of god. It is. It's literally like, hey, guess what? Look at this. That's yeah, better than you. Cora, go lay down. What if chimpanzees are our successors? We've chosen them. <laughs> We've chosen them already. Yeah. We were like, hey, let's go for gorillas. And we're like, they don't seem to have it. Oh, Chimpanzees. Chimpanzees, dude. They've got that moxie. Uh, yeah, it's called fucking insanity. Exactly. That's stuff that humans have. Insanity. <laughs> yeah. Mutual. Insanity. Destruction. Mutual assured destruction. Yes. Mad. Yes. Chimpanzees have been known to have that type of mentality. Yeah, I'll burn down your tree. I will kill myself to kill you. Yeah. I will kill them to kill you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll kill myself twice over. What, what if... What, what would they fucking look like? If they, like, evolved into, like, a civilization? I, I just imagine the fucking Star Trek episode... Or the Planet of the Apes. When they look like people, but just their faces are fucking... <laughs> people with just ma- chimp masks on. Straight up looks like that? Science is like all trying to figure it out, and I was like, no, 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 I've been there. 